On her way to her father's funeral at the Great Sept of Baylor, Cersei recalls when she was a young teenager before Robert's rebellion, she visited a woods witch known as Maggie to predict her future. Young Cersei asks Maggie if she will marry the prince as her father desired. Maggie answers that she will not, but she will marry the king. Around the same time, Daenerys visits her imprisoned dragons, calling Rhaegal, the dragon she had named after her brother, by name. Barristan Selmy shares some of his memories of Rhaegar with Daenerys in Marine. She is pleasantly surprised to discover that Rhaegar was more than the great killer that Viserys made him out to be. Selmy tells her how Rhaegar used to disguise himself as a minstrel and play on the streets of King's Landing while Sir Barristan stood guard. Rhaegar made quite a tidy profit on these excursions, and although he once spent the money on getting himself and Selmy very, very drunk, he usually gave the money away to other minstrels or to orphanages. Barristan mentions that Rhaegar never liked killing but instead loved singing. Around the same time, Peter Baelish recounts the events of the tourney at Harrenhal to Sansa Stark while visiting Lyanna's tomb in the crypts below Winterfell. He was just a small boy in the entourage of the Tullys at the time, but he saw what the entire huge crowd did. After defeating Sir Barristan in the final tilt, Rhaegar rode past his wife Aelia Martell and gave the victor's crown of flowers to Lyanna Stark, naming her the tournament's Queen of Love and Beauty. Baelish recalls how the entire crowd of hundreds of people fell silent at this shocking action. He then muses how Robert's rebellion broke out because both Robert and Rhaegar wanted Lyanna, and wonders how many people died because Rhaegar chose Lyanna that day. Sansa accuses that Rhaegar, chose, her aunt Lyanna, then kidnapped and raped her, to which Littlefinger silently gives a wry look, as if he doubts that, but doesn't explain further.